In terms of um, efficacy of marijuana in treating PTSD, we have numerous anecdotal reports from our combat vets and even from other first responders like police and fire talking about how valuable um, cannabis has been in managing their symptoms. My name is Sue Sisley and I am uh, on faculty at the University of Arizona where I practice internal medicine and psychiatry so I'm mostly doing primary care for seriously mentally ill patients. People who suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder end up on five or six different psychiatric meds and then they're plagued with all kinds of side effects and drug interactions. The way um, marijuana with its 60 or 70 different phytocannabinoids and this entourage effect, the way they all interact so elegantly with each other, the, the truth is that marijuana can treat the whole spectrum of PTSD symptoms with this one medication. What we find from patients is a lot of them learn how to use it uh, more in a targeted way to manage, for instance, a lot of our PTSD patients have flashbacks at night and tr real trouble sleeping, and so they can simply dose marijuana in the evenings to help them um, decompress so that they can get some rest at night, which normally they couldn't do. And what's really the beauty of marijuana for treating PTSD is PTSD is such a complex syndrome. It has so many, it's, it's not just flashbacks and nightmares, it's also depression and anxiety and increased startle response and all kinds of um, this whole array of symptoms that are not easily managed by one or two medications. The proof is in the, the clinical response. We're seeing patients who are able to walk away from a lot of their psych meds and their opioids and simply manage their symptoms with one drug, marijuana, and that speaks volumes. Despite what the government says about marijuana having no medical value, you can't deny all these anecdotal reports. A lot of these are high-ranking veterans who, have, who hold a lot of respect and prestige in the military complex, and they're showing the courage more and more to speak openly about their experiences with marijuana. And I think that's been the most valuable thing in trying to move this issue forward. Marijuana is the only Schedule I drug that requires a second approval by NIDA even after you've already received FDA approval. NIDA is the National Institute on Drug Abuse and they are a big federal agency that's in charge of a lot of different things, primarily curbing illicit drug abuse. And they're also uh, charged with administering the only legal supply of marijuana in the country that's available for FDA approved studies. So NIDA has, what we call it the NIDA monopoly, it's a term that we've coined to describe the situation where they have basically a government enforced monopoly on the only legal supply of marijuana. So if NIDA doesn't like your study, they can essentially derail it by never agreeing to sell you marijuana for your FDA approved study. In our frustration with trying to overcome this NIDA monopoly, we've created this political action committee called Americans for Scientific Freedom. And I think that's a very appropriate name because we are desperate to ensure that science is never uh, trumped by politics. We believe that you know, rigorous scientific studies deserve to be implemented and should never be shackled by the political environment that we're in. If you want to support Americans for Scientific Freedom and contribute to this political action committee, you can go on our website, americansforscientificfreedom.com, and you can read up on some of our initiatives, both at the state and federal level. We need 500 individual donations of $10 a piece. And we would be most grateful to have your support for eliminating the barriers to marijuana research.